Good morning everyone, I'm Shelly with JS Hobbies and Crafts and I have another mini album tutorial for you and this one is along the lines of masculine and it is a beginner's album um, and I did not use any trim dies or uh, punches in this. I wanted to make it fairly simple and easy. This is a six and a half inch by eight and a half inch with a three and a half inch spine. And I used the Chow Bella Codex paper. And on the front here, we have a magnetic little folder. And here is the spine. I really enjoyed working with this paper. So let's get into the album. So our page one is here and we have a magnetic band here that holds everything in. I did use all the paper in the two paper packs to finish up and make my picture mats. I just got some stuff here. This is a fold out but there's also a very large side pocket here. And this just comes out and there's an inner pocket very easy construction and it holds a lot of photos. These are flip ups and flip downs and you can kind of see. And then what we did was we kind of created a, a couple stacked pillow, I guess you'd call it, pillow style pockets. And they just hold some picture mats and over here as well. Page two, we have a large back pocket here. And I created a folder. And you do learn how to make these folders um, because we have some actually in or on the pages there. And then down here we have a little charm and another little pillow pocket. Page three, let's just latch that up. Page three, this is two large fold outs. Let's start here. Uh, we created this so we can tuck things back behind. And this opens up and there's lots of places just to plant photos. As you can see, we have a little tag there and we can slide something back behind. And we have some good sized picture mats. Page four, we have a large pocket in the back and it is spaced so you can get a lot in there. And then up here we have a little tuck area for another little pocket. Page five is we have a magnetic uh, strap here that holds our waterfall down. And we have a real basic waterfall that we create. We have a diagonal pocket. Next, this is where in the video you learn how to make these. And these are just uh, folders and they are magnetic. But also back behind we have uh, glued them down to where we've created pocket room behind them. And hold quite a bit there. Next page, this is a double fold out and this just folds this way. You got room for a photo and this one folds out and we have pockets. Here we have another folder and it's magnetic. And back behind you can stuff uh, photo maps to store your photo maps. These two pages we left alone so that we can just plant our photos. Here what we have is a large uh, flip and we have a little tag and a charm and we can slide photo maps back behind in there. We have a nice size pocket here too.
And last page, we have a space pocket, which means we can get a lot more photo maps in there. We can just stack them on in, and uh, there's plenty of room. And we have a little charm there. So that is what we're going to be uh, making today. It's very simple, and I do take you step by step. The most important thing is you will want to download the free copy of the materials list and pre-cutting measuring scoring guide. And there's a link underneath this video in the description area where you can click on that. It goes straight to the tutorials page and it you can just click and download. If you have Google Chrome or Firefox and uh, you're updated, uh, I have not had anybody tell me they've had a problem downloading. However, I did check into why some people cannot, and it may be because you're using Internet Explorer as your browser. From what the webmaster told me is that I guess Microsoft stopped updating that uh, for whatever reasons, and that may be the case. If you cannot download the copy, please feel free to email me and I will send it to you. And my email address is located underneath the video as well in the description area. And as with all my tutorials, materials can be purchased at my store, JS Hobbies and Crafts, if you need. All right, let's move into the materials list for this awesome album. Materials list. So the main ingredient is the Chow Bella Codex paper. And there are 12 sheets, double-sided, per package. And for this mini album tutorial, we're going to need two packages. And uh, this paper is amazing, and I can't wait to get started with it. We're going to need two pieces of medium weight chipboard, and these are 12 by 12 sizes, and we'll be cutting these down uh, to accommodate our cover sizes and our spine. You're going to need Tyvek, and Tyvek is a material that is very hard to tear, and that is part of our binding. So we're only going to need a couple strips off this, so if you already have uh, some Tyvek, uh, use it. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Coordinations Premium Cardstock Black Cat. It's a 65-pound weight. Also in this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Tim Holtz Ornate Plates. And in this, you're going to get several different plates. And we'll use a couple of these, uh, maybe even three, but to at least two of them in this tutorial. And it also comes with some brads there. For our side closure, I am going to be using the Dritz uh, Extra Large Hook and Eyes. And there are three pairs and we're going to be needing one pair, so you'll have two left over for another project. And this is what's going to close our album on the side. Also, I'm going to be using the Tim Holtz Mini Gears in this. Another product of Tim Holtz is the Charmed Charms, and we'll be using some of these. I'm also going to be using the Dewdrop Brilliance, and this is the Galaxy Gold, and it's a pigment ink. Adhesives. You're going to want a pack of the score tape, quarter inch size, and three eighths inch size. You're also going to want a good glue. I recommend Art Glitter Designer Dries Clear Glue, and this is what's going to adhere down our metal embellishments um, and we'll be using this throughout the tutorial and if you are going to get this I do recommend buying that metal tip and that is what's going to control the flow of glue and it is more precise and you don't need much of this glue so you definitely want that metal tip. It's going to be two packs of heavy-duty 
magnets and I sell them in a 10 pack at my store so you'll need a couple packs of these. I am not using any trim dies or punches but I will give you some tips on if you want to use those. Please feel free to use yours. One thing that you uh, may want to get is some thin black ribbon. We will be using some of this in the tutorial. And the width of this one is 1 8 inch wide. That's perfect. You can make bows, you can do ties, and it's not too wide. So some black ribbon if you've got it. Items that you're going to want uh, to complete this is, of course, you're going to want your paper cutter. You're going to need a scoring board, a scoring tool, pencil with erasers, some scissors, a craft knife is very helpful. And if you have any binder clips or clamps, uh, you'll need one uh, to help you along. It isn't necessary, but I do recommend um, uh, having something there. Another item you're going to want is, of course, your ruler. And I do have my own uh, ruler. Uh, it's a clear ruler and you can stick black cardstock back behind if needed. Since we're using black cardstock, it's not so necessary to place a piece of uh, cardstock behind. But my rulers, if you're not real savvy at measurements, my ruler does give you those measurements. Like if you need two and a one eighth inch, it's right there for you. And if you're needing to for the 16, three, 3 and 3 sixteenths, for example, it's right there. So this ruler is very handy for quick measurements and uh, helping you along. It's time to start building our album. So let's start with the chipboard. You should have cut two pieces that are six and a half inch by eight and a half inch. We labeled one front and we labeled one back. You also would have cut a three and a half inch by eight and a half inch piece of chipboard and we labeled that spine. Tie back. We cut two strips that were one and a half inches wide by eight inches tall. We cut with our black cardstock two pieces that were one and a half inch by eight and a quarter inches, and we labeled those Tyvek cover. We cut six pieces of cardstock that were six and seven eighths inch by eight and a quarter inch and we labeled those inner pages. We had two pieces that were cut at one and a half inch by eight and a half inch and we labeled these outside hinge cover. One more piece that I almost forgot most important is our three and seven sixteenths inch by eight and a quarter inch and we labeled that spine cover. Let's start assembly. We will grab our chipboard pieces and we'll set the tie back off to the side for a moment. So because I wanted this tutorial to be easy and it's a no wrapping style uh, album, that means we do not need the spaces in between. In fact, these are going to go right up next to each other. If you are wrapping your album, you have to allow a space in between or you will not be able to close your album. So with that being said, let's start by having these two, the front and the spine, butt up next to each other, even top and bottom. I'm just going to slide that on up. Your Tyvek. This is where we are going to need our score tape. So let's grab our 3 8 inch score tape. On each one of these Tyvek pieces, we are going to completely cover it with our score tape. So we'll want to come up to the top and to the very left side. 
to start. And what I like to do is first line my score tape all the way around the edges like a picture frame. And if you have any score tape that is peeking over the edge of your Tyvek, when you're done laying your score tape, we can clip that off because we definitely will want to do that. You can also use quarter inch if that's all you have, but you are going to want to completely cover each Tyvek piece. Flip it over and clip off any score tape that peeks over. Now this is very important, this next step. Anytime you lay score tape or even glue down, you should always use your scoring tool or a burnisher and burnish down that score tape really good. We want to get all the air out from underneath that. If you have air and you don't do this, you may have problems of liftage. So get the air out from underneath all that. Make sure it's burnished down really good. We're going to do the same with this piece. So let's get ready. I've got my two pieces ready to go. They're burnished down and I clipped off any score tape peeking over. Let's grab our pieces here. I've got the front and the spine. To make this easier, what I would like you to do is take your ruler and measure up one quarter inch, one quarter from the bottom, and just make a pencil mark. Flip this around and we're going to do the same. Measure up a quarter inch on your spine and on your other piece. Alright, so that is going to help you with placement. So when we remove the, tie the backing of the score tape, we're just going to center this over that hinge, that crease there. We'll start with the bottom lining up where that pencil mark is and just placing your Tyvek so you can no longer see the pencil mark and you will place it down. I'm going to remove the backing off my Tyvek, the score tape backing, and I'm going to show you placement. The craft knife comes in very handy for lifting up that uh, score tape backing. So one tip that I want to give is try to keep your fingers off the score tape. It's almost impossible. So what I have to do throughout the tutorial is wash my hands, get all the oils or lotions and everything off my fingertips. Um, because the fingertip touches this and it's got oils on it, it's less effective. This tape is not forgiving. Um, it's not meant to be. So I have my marks. I know that my two pieces of chipboard are flush together, butted up. I'm going to center this piece right over that uh, seam there, which is our hinge, as best I can anyway. Okay, so this one is down. This is where we burnish really good. Make sure there is no air caught underneath. There's our first side. We're going to grab our other piece and we're going to do the same thing, making sure top and bottom are lined up and this is flush together. So I'm going to remove my score tape and we will place this together got the score tape backing off. I'm going to push these up flush. If you get your Tyvek on crooked or a little bit of a gap is somewhere, it's okay. Uh, you're really not going to be able to see that when we're done. But, so we just try to do the best we can. And these will not show. The next step is we want our Tyvek covers. Now take your ruler and measure up from the bottom one eighth inch right underneath there. We'll come over here and do the same thing. Just kind of make a mark. What we're going to do is on the side that we have our writing, we're going to completely cover with score tape. Kind of like what we did with the Tyvek. 
If you notice that when you lay this down, it's going to be longer than the tie back, and that is to make sure that it gets covered. I mentioned that if you get your tie back on a little crooked, like mine, for instance, I wasn't perfect. As you can see, I have a little more over on this side than this side. What's going to happen is we will end up down on that little mark we made. We're going to place this and bring it up just like that. If you have any tie back that is peeking through, it's okay. It's going to get covered with our decorative paper. Same thing over here. Just make sure you bring it down to your marks and then that will leave you with a 1 8 inch gap on the bottom and the top. So just remember, just place your score tape down and I'm going to get mine ready to go here. I have the score tape over my Tyvek covers. Now one thing about this album is this is the inside, okay? It will not flip back the other way. It's a book. It opens this way, as you can see. All right, so let's take off the score tape backing. Make sure that you've burnished it down. Uh, your score tape is down firmly. There is no air bubbles underneath there. And then we're going to place these. Got the score tape backing off. I'm going to line it up with that little notch I made down there with my pencil. And as you can see, my tie back was off. I think I showed you that. And I'm going to burnish this down really good. Get all that air bubbles out. Okay, let's do the same with this one. Remove our score tape and place it. And it's very important that you keep this even with over here. So if you were a little off from your mark here, just make sure that this one's the same. I've got mine down. Now here's a tip too. Using black cardstock, sometimes when you're burnishing, it will make scratch marks. So if you want to grab a piece of your leftover cardstock from your cuttings and just write scratch on it, you can actually place this over and then burnish. And that helps from eliminating any scratches. And then you'll be able to see the scratch marks on this. Okay. Once you've burnished down everything, put your hand right here on the spine, right on the other side here of that little hinge area, your crease, and slowly lift this up. And that is why we use score tape to make sure and burnish because you should not get any bubbling here. So, and you should have a clean crease. We're gonna do the same, I'm gonna hold it down and I'm going to slowly pull these up. Now, right now, our piece is going to be pretty stiff, okay? Just like anything that's new in a book or whatever, it's going to be pretty stiff. It will work itself out a bit. So there we have it. All right, we will install our inner pages after our next step. What we had was our one and a half by eight and a half inch outer hinge covers. And we scored that at three quarters of an inch when we laid that down. So what we're going to be doing is folding on that score line so that the writing is going to be in the valley. And then we won't be able to see it. These are going to get attached to the outside. So let's get our score tape out. And this is, uh, everyone has their own way of building albums. And I teach this so many different ways. Um, so people can learn that, gee, I can do it this way, that way, whatever fits uh, your, your needs or what you want to do or whatever is easiest for you. So that's one thing about my tutorials is that each one might be a little bit different. And, uh, and then some parts of it the same. So I am looking at the side that has the writing and I'll open this back up. There's the score line there. I'm going to lay this right next to that score line and I'm going to lay strips now on to cover it. We'll clip off any overhang of score tape for sure. 
we, if we're going to invest our time and money, we might as well make it so it does not look sloppy. Okay, I've got one down here. I do need to burnish it. I'm going to move on to this one, covering it. I've got my score tape all burnished down to this. I can still uh, crease it. Okay, so this was our inside. Now we're going to work on our outside, covering up the seams as best we can. And this is just a little added something. You don't have to do these strips, but we are in this one. So I am going to release the score tape off both sides. I'll plant one side of this down and then the other side will wrap around. And these are our outside. So here I have this. If you hold your book like this, do not do this while it's flat. You will not be able to open your book. So this is eight and a half inches. I'm just going to place that right at the top where that crease is should meet your spine crease. I'm going to place it there, just kind of push here a little, and then I'll be able to do the same here. And that should get you on. Now, holding your book in this position, you can now wrap over the sides and try to keep that even with the top there and what you're doing. If you get any bubbling or creasing, it's okay, it's going to get covered, okay? All right, I got that down, and I can use my bone folder now to uh, burnish. And we'll open this up in a moment. Okay, so now here it is, and we're going to open it up and burnish down. All I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the crease on the outside. So I'm going to run my nails together down that crease to make sure the score tape is all the way down. And I'm just going to run my fingers. Make sure it's down really good. Okay. And then I can use this to kind of help it out. And then open it and you have a nice edge there. Okay, it's like a book. We're going to do the same thing with this side now. Okay, flip it over and we're going to remove our score tape backing. We will start with this side, lining up the, the score line with our crease so it kind of sits there. We'll place it and wrap it around. So let's do that. And again, if you have any wrinkles, this part is definitely going to get covered with paper so you won't see it. Matter of fact, you shouldn't be able to see uh, any of this on the front and here because our paper gets placed. Okay, next, let's open it up to the inside and we're going to start putting in our pages. Let's grab our spine cover. And if you notice that when we place this, we will use that side down. But if you notice, you bring this down to your inner hinge, our Tyvek cover hinges, bring it down to the bottom. It should fit perfectly in between this and not interfere. It should be the same height and as those. So it's gonna look really good. So the side that we want to place our score tape on is the side with the writing because then we can flip it over and it's going to be nice and clean. Our first step is to line our score tape around the outside edges. And if we have any that peeks over the edge when we flip it over, we can see any of the uh, score tape, we will trim it. Next, what we're going to do, because this is a very vital piece to making sure our hinges stay down and everything, we are going to line side by side all the way across with our 3 8 inch score tape. So let's do that. Once you've burnished it down really good, making sure and, uh, and observing to make sure that all the air bubbles are out from underneath, your score tape is down really good. We're going to remove the backing off of this, and like I said before, we're going to place it 
and using the bottom of our little hinge covers, remember we're in the inside, we're going to place this in between those hinges. And once it's down, it'll look nice and and place. And it's down. Next, let's get ready to plant our inner pages. Each one of these had a score line. When we place this on our scoring board, we scored each one at six and three eighths. So now we are going to fold on each one. Mine are all folded. And the or the peak is up. Use your three eighths inch score tape in between that little area. Or you can place two pieces of the quarter inch if, if that helps. Very important that you burnish this down. Throughout this tutorial you will be burnishing so um, and cutting off any score tape that hangs over. It will show if you do not. And again, let's make a, a nice clean album. So on each one of these, we are going to lay our score tape. So let's get ready and do that. I have all the score tape on my inner pages. The hinges are these. And we are going to place these. So the first one, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do first before we do it. It's easier so you can kind of see what's going on. So here is the inside front and the back. If you were to pull this up, what we're going to do is the height of this is the same as our spine cover here. So if you were to pull this up and just butt that right up next to this, you're going to be fine. And we are going to place that and then we will burnish it down. And then it's very easy because we're lined up already. We see where we need to be and each one will go uh, fall in place easier so there isn't a whole lot of crooked pages. Um, so let me grab this and we're going to place our first one here. Okay, I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to take the edge of this and make sure when you do this you have this up. And I'm going to line it up with the bottom of here. And I can press. Then I can leave that alone and just kind of do like so. All right, it is time to burnish. Okay, so this one we can just flop right on over. Let's grab our next one. I've already burnished all mine. They're ready to go. The next one is very simple. We are just going to, you can flop this over, you're just going to line it up with the bottom and the top here, which are the same. And it should go right on in next to it, like so. So this is an easy way, and I'm going to just use this because it isn't really going to, even if it does scratch a little, it'll be okay. It's easier for me. Okay. So we got our second one in. Notice they are straight with each other. And we're going to keep going uh, forward until there's no more left. And again, so we just paper. It's an oldie. All right, that's in. Next. There's another one. And as you can see, these just start falling in line together. Just make sure you're straight on the bottom and top. And this pencil mark, you don't have to erase if you have this all over because our, our decorative paper is going to cover that. And I got one more to go, and we will have a little bit bigger uh, spacing in the back, which will be perfect for what we are doing. 
So there we go. So if you were to pull this up, this is what you should have. I'm not sure if you can see that very well. And it looks nice. So All right, we are done with constructing the album. What I want you to do right now because so that we do not get turned around. We have a slightly larger gap in the back which is needed for what we'll be doing back there. So we are going to go front, out, side. This will get covered with paper but it will help us when we're placing our decorative paper so we don't actually get upside down. I've done it before. It's a mess. <laughs> okay, this is the back outside. And also by writing this, we know that if we're looking at it like this, it's going to be going the wrong way. So that will keep us straight with that and how we've done this. Let's move on to getting our paper on the outside. We are on to decorating our cover. And there is only one cut to make with your cardstock on the pre-cutting measurement guide. And that was a piece that was five and seven eighths by seven and three quarters inch wide. And we laid this on our scoring board so we were seven and three quarters inch across and we scored at three and seven eighths. So we're just going to fold on that fold line there and we will set this off to the side. Let's get into our decorative paper. And the first one um, for the main covering of the album, we're going to be using this. It's quite lovely and on the other side it looks like this. So in order for us to get the same cuts and leftover pieces, we're going to look at it this side and we're going to flip this all the way upside down until you see that trim piece over here. We're going to measure over six and three eighths inch and cut. This is what you should have. Um, we are going to be uh, making a couple piles, okay? There, there are scrap piles. I call them reserves. So when you are cutting all your black cardstock, you should have some left over. That is our first pile, and that's where we're going to keep all our leftover black cardstock out of our way. Anything we have leftover cutting, such as this, we do need to get one more piece off this, but we will put in a second pile. And I again, I call these our reserves, because we're reserving it until we need it to pull it back out to use in our album. Okay, so just leave this one here for now. On this one, we're going to look at it so that the little uh, lock piece is up at the top. We're going to measure over 8 and 3 8 inch and cut. This piece we can put in our reserves. So for this piece here, what we're going to do is we are going to cut this trim piece off. But I want us to all have the same width. So flip this around to where it's on this side. I try to stay consistent by starting over here and measuring over this way every time. So we're not measuring this way, that way, and all that. So for this, I want you to measure over five inches and cut. For now, stick this in our reserves until we need it again. This is what we should have. Now let's just look at it like this. We will measure over 8 and 3 8 inch and cut. We'll put the smaller piece in our reserves. Now one thing about my tutorials, it is a step by step and um, we don't have any of the cuts uh, for our decorated paper on our pre cutting measurement guide. It's almost impossible for me to tell you which way to do the paper so that we all have the same cuts and leftover pieces by writing it down. So it's always going to be in the tutorial where I show you how to cut your decorated paper. Alright, so I'm looking at the front, the outside, 
And if you were to place this center, it should give you a nice black frame of chipboard around your piece. Remember the little gold that, uh, that I showed in the materials list? This is what I want us to do. I want us to take the gold and just go around the edges of our piece. Just for something different. I think it's going to look good. So let's take our gold and just wipe that on the outside all the way around. So I've got mine on and I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick it up or not. But I have that gold all the way around. Okay, let's uh, start off by flipping this over. We are going to add our score tape to this. And I want to use my quarter inch score tape if I can find it. Oh, I have some left over here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to line the outside of our paper here without going over the edge all the way around like a picture frame. So let's start there. One thing you're going to want to do is turn this over if you can see any of your score tape peeking out from under the sides. From the sides, we'll clip that off. The next place that we want to do is we're going to place another piece of score tape right next to the edge ones. And we'll do it on both sides just in case you get flipped around. The reason why is because when this is down, we have our little dritz uh, hook that comes out, and I like to make sure that we catch it with the score tape. So if you get turned around, it makes no difference. Um, both sides is gonna have something down there. So now we're gonna go one down the middle, and we will just do two on either side of that. We don't have much as well as, uh, as far as embellishments and heavy weight, so let's just be safe on this and run our score tape down. Another thing about my tutorials, if you are new to it, um, we start off very slow. Uh, until people can get used to my teaching, how I teach it, and then once we get started, they've made a pocket, they've, they've attached a fold-out uh, page, and so forth. You get more accustomed to how I'm teaching and how I uh, do things in my mini-albums. So uh, we start off slow, and then we can usually, by the time we hit page three, start picking up the pace. All right, so on this, and again, we're working with the front outside. On your piece, you will notice some distressing over here. I think I want the most of the distressing down in the far right corner. What we're going to do is remove all the score tape backing, and we are going to place this on the front, leaving us that black border trying to stay even. I've got the backing off, and I'm ready to place it. I am going to turn my album so that I don't get my head in the video. And I'm going to pull this up so I can see what I'm doing here. Trying to do this the best I can, keeping straight. I hope that is straight. I'll find out. It's straight enough. So one thing that we can do is open up our album and lay it flat. Be careful you don't crush your pages underneath. And we're just going to make sure that that score tape has made contact with our paper really good. And you probably can hear some bubbling underneath there where you're getting that air out and the score tape is placing. So this is our album cover piece. This. This is where I wanted to bring it right like this. So we are going to cover that with our score tape. However, I want to go around the edges, and I'm just using mine like this, with some of that gold just around there, just to give it that gold as the same. I found that this ink, if you like to make journals, if you were to, uh, this is just, this has nothing to do with this, but if you wanted to, and we may even end up doing this, but taking your page and running it along, it looks like a gold foil uh, at the end of your pages. And I'm debating whether or not we should be doing that. 
If you don't have this, um, it's okay. It's not going to hurt the album not having it on there. This is just something I thought would be kind of cool to accent. This is probably the most realistic gold foil look of this Galaxy Gold that I've uh, found. Okay, it is time for our score tape. And for this, I'm just going to lay it down on the back side there. And then I'll lay one on this side. And then I think I'll just squiggle a little glue in between. I think it'll be just fine like that. You'll definitely want to burnish this down. And you will definitely want to uh, make sure you clip off any score tape that might over overhang. Okay. So on my piece, I have some blue up here, and I have some blue down here. I think I want the blue to be this part down here. And I'm going to place mine, and then I'm going to bring it up to show you exactly where I placed it. And I did not use glue, but I think it's okay. I got a little ahead of myself, a little excited. I thought that would look really cool. So that's how I have mine. And I think that looks good. All right, on this, and we'll get to the spine and the back and stuff. Let's just uh, do this. So with this, the peak is out over here, the opening over here. I'm going to see what this looks like before I do it. And then, uh, but I think it's going to look pretty cool. I'm just going to go around the outside of the top here with this gold all the way around. Okay, so I have it on there. It looks pretty good. Let's look in our paper pack, and what I'm looking to get is this piece. And on the back, it looks like that. So I am going to take my scissors, and when I cut, I'm just going to cut straight up along this and over. In order for me to get a straight cut, I think I'll put this on my paper cutter. So I'm going to cut mine, and then I can show you what mine looks like. So this is what mine looks like. As you can see, uh, I've got it cut down at the bottom to where there was just a little bit of a sliver cut off at the bottom. And then on the sides, I cut it like so. So most of the brown has been cut off. Um, to know exactly for you, this is what I suggest, is placing, after you've cut, place this down. You should have a black border and your gold showing around it. If you need to trim it a little bit more, then do so. Once you have yours cut out, and when you place it down, you can see your black border and your gold, we're going to use our glue, apply glue, and we're going to center that and glue it down. I've got mine down, and this is where I'm going to burnish it down to get any excess glue to come out the sides, like up in here. And that also ensures I get the uh, ensures that I get the uh, air bubbles out, and it's going to lay flat. So the opening is off to the right. Let's grab a couple of our magnets, and we're just going to open that right up, like so. And not sure which dog that is. We're going to come in, oh, come in about three quarters of an inch from that, and we'll place our magnet. This one we're just going to set off to the side for right now. Let's find our paper for this. Let's pull this out of our reserves. It's a piece that is more narrow. It's the shorter piece in our reserves on the back. It looks like this. Measure over 5 and 5 eighths inch and cut. The small piece that's left over, please put in your reserves. Any leftover cuttings, even if it's a sliver, like that one sliver I showed you at the bottom of this that we cut, keep it. We might be able to use it somewhere. All right, so we have this. One thing, I, if you're new to mini album making, this is your first time seeing my tutorial. Before we glue down anything, we always verify our cut is good. So if you were to place this down, what we're looking for is a black border here, top, bottom, and you would have a black border before you would hit the score line there. 
So my cut is good. I'm actually going to turn mine around so the lighter is up at the top. I'm going to apply glue. I'm going to glue this down and then I will burnish it down. Pull this back out of reserves. We've already cut out the middle. What we're going to do is cut this piece out and I'm going to go from the top of the panel like so. Now if you're looking at this once you've cut that out, if you were to measure over 5 and 5 eighths and cut, it'll be the same height as this one. After making the cut, if you place it down, you'll notice you'll have your black border here and here, but we're going to be too wide. Let's cut off the brown on each side, and then we will verify that it's the same width as this one that will give us a little bit of a black border around it without interfering with that score line. Let's give that a try, and if we need to trim off a little bit more to make it more of a cozier fit, we'll do so. Once you've verified that you fit, apply your glue, and we'll match that up the same as the top and the bottom, and we will burnish that down really good. Okay, let's close that up. Grab the mate to your magnet, and it will find it. We'll just squeeze a little glue underneath there to hold it in place. Now what we're going to do is apply glue to the back of this and we are going to place this right in the center of our album. So I'm going to get some glue on here and we'll do this together. And I'm going to spread this out so it's easier for when I do burnish down. Got my glue. And I think I want it right here. I think that's good. I'm going to watch these lines in the paper to try and keep me straight. Now I can open this up and burnish it down and clean up any glue if I got too much glue going. Great. That looks good. Let's get our, before we do the dritz, let's just move on to getting our paper for the back. And we already have something for the spine. Let's take a look. Let's work on the spine. We have this in our reserve. It's 12 inches. And let's just flip it over so we can see what we're doing. We will measure over 8 and 3 8 inch and cut. Put the smaller piece in your reserves. This is what we have. We will measure over 3 and a half inches and cut. Put the smaller piece in your reserves. Here's our album spine. If you were to lay this down, because we have the hinges there, you should have some black on the top and the bottom, and you might see your black on the side. So you'll be centering that in between your black. Let's apply our score tape. So first thing, score tape around the outside like a picture frame. Got my score tape down. Now this is real simple. We're just going to go straight down the middle and we'll put one on either side. And if your lines are of score tape are not even, like mine, they're a little cattywampus. <laughs> it's okay. Let's burnish that down and then we will put this on the spine together. I am ready to place mine. Um, the distress part I'll have at the bottom. My favorite way to do this is while it is in this position. Sometimes when we lay it out flat, depending on where our creases are, sometimes we can get off as far as uh, how even. So I'm going to turn mine. My cover is right here and I'm going to try and match up the top of the cover decorative paper with this and then also try to get as even as I can in between. Now that I have that, this is where I can now burnish it down really good. Make sure all that score tape, especially along those edges there. 
I think that looks pretty darn good. What do you think? Time to get our back piece. I am in paper pack number two because I want to get the matching piece, which is right here, to the other. So I'm just going to combine both of mine. All right, let's take a look at the back side of this print, looking at it like this. Let's measure over six and three eighths inch and cut. We're gonna need our trim piece here in a moment. Let's turn our page, looking at it like this, measure over eight and three eighths inch and cut. Before you go farther, let's verify that your cut was accurate and that should leave you a black border all the way around. Okay, this one measure over five inches and cut. Place the very large piece in our reserves and it matters not at this point which way you're going but we'll measure over eight and three-eighths inch and cut. Let's grab our gold and we are going to go around the outside edges of this piece and this piece. Once you're done going around the edges we're going to do the same thing um, we did for the front. We'll go around the outside like a picture frame and we'll go one down the middle of score tape and we'll do one next to those side ones. Let's start there. And I think for the back we'll just go one on either side. I think we'll be just fine like that. Let's burnish that down and then clip off any score tape that overhangs. And then we're also going to put a couple rows of score tape on this. All right, back outside I got the score tape backing off and I'm going to try and be even with this. I'm going to place this. Okay, I'm going to open that up. Use this to burnish down. Okay, now remember, check to make sure you are not upside down or anything. Our opening is over here if we're working on the back. We will remove our score tape backing with this and look to see where you put it on the front. We should be fairly close to that, placing it the same back here. So let's place that. Got mine down. We're not going to be doing much for the front cover other than a few more things, and one of which is our drips. So let's get into our drits and we will grab out one of the hooks and one of the eyes and we're done with this for this tutorial. This is where I said a clamp or a binder clip will come in handy. And I'm going to be using my glue here because it does work on metal and I am going to apply to the I part some glue. I'm going to try and center this in the center of my book, so I'm going to take a peek here. Whoops. I'll wipe up any glue. Like now is a good idea. Got most of my glue off there. Just a few more places I need it. Okay, so just place it in the middle there. Now, while it's wet there, what I want you to do is hold it with your thumb so it doesn't get away. Take the hook, and if you can slide it in comfortably, it will go in and out. You've got your placement correctly. So, mine looks pretty straight there. I'm going to use a cl my clamp here, and I'm just going to clamp that down. This part we're going to save until the end of the tutorial. Alright, a couple more things that I would like to do is, I'm going to undo that really quick, I'm going to get some glue up. We're going to place one of these gears over the top. So I'm just going to get in here. And let's see what we have. We're going to have to place it with the think it's more of a copper and it's going to be the flat side is going to go down on top of this side. So I'm just going to place glue 
on my gear. I'm not sure where it's going to hit, but I do want some glue. So when you place this over the dritz, just make sure you're not interfering with that space to get your hook in. Once you have it, now you can binder clip it down. Now, for the front of my album, and I am going to prop this up with something like that so you can see what I'm doing. I have three of the smallest Tim Holtz gears. Two of them are kind of coppered colored, and then this one is almost like a dark uh, gold brass, kind of almost the same as your Dritz. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the one that's kind of a gold color and make sure you get the back side with your glue. I'm going to attempt to get this right in the middle on that trim piece, as even in the middle as I can. The other two, I'll apply glue and I will space those out like this. So I've got mine glued down. Let's open up our album, lay it flat. We have our Tim Holtz ornate plates. And I think the one I want to get at is the gold one, the gold square one here. Okay, let's find something for that. In your paper pack, you will find the sentiments pa uh, page. A lot of it is in Italian. And I could have sworn that I, and I do, I went on Google Translate to find out exactly what some of these uh, translate to English. And I didn't do a very good job with putting in the apostrophes and all that. So it may be off a little bit. Um, as we use some of these, I'll tell you what I came up with as far as what Google Translate, somewhere what the meaning is. But for now, you have a choice. You can either cut this little sentiment out, saying Leonardo da Vinci, which I think would be kind of cool. And when I cut this, I'm going to leave a little bit of brown around it for now. So this is in the bottom. I just cut straight off. That is a choice. And what that will look like, if you put it back behind and center it, it'll just fit and that could place down and look really cool. Another option is, if you'd like to write what yours is, like perhaps you'd like to put uh, dates on your album, we're just gonna use our scissors and cut this blank little piece out so that that would give you the option of perhaps writing your name, family, whatever it is, but when all said and done, it would look like this behind where it's nothing in there. So that is completely up to you. I am trying to decide. I like them both. And that looks really cool. Duh. All right, because I'll probably end up selling this off of uh, this album. I'm going to go with the blank side. So this is what you'll want to do with either this one or the other one. Is you're going to place glue back behind right on the plate just around the plate. Okay, you can add more down here actually and up through here. What you're going to want to do is place your piece so that it matches up on the side. Once you have it down, that is where you can cut off any excess over here. So I will cut my excess off. I'm not going to use the brads. I'm actually just going to leave them like that. And down here, I can actually cut and then trim off at an angle underneath before the glue totally sets. And then we'd have this or the Da Vinci. I think that's really cool. If, if I wasn't going to sell this album down the road, um, I would probably, uh, if I was keeping it for myself, I'd probably go with this. It's kind of cool. But because there may be a possibility down the road, I sell this. So now with this, 
and I think this might be dry enough just to put it down. I'm going to apply my glue to the back. And if you're using this glue, um, it will grab pretty well. So, And you'll just want to center it side to side of your paper. Put it towards the top there somewhere. Let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good to me. Just straighten it out a little. Okay, mine's already grabbing with the glue, but I'm going to put my hand in there and make sure the paper's backing down. All right. Our album, the outside cover, is complete. There's nothing else that we need to do. We cannot uh, install this till the end of the tutorial because we'll need to measure with our ribbon how much space we're going to need after our flips and accommodating for picture mats. So we'll just save that. We are now on to page one. We are on page one and we have a bunch of pre-cuts so let's go over those. This is a time for us to check to see if there's any errors on our scoring or cuts. So we cut one piece that was two inches by five and a half inches and we labeled that top strap. We had a two inch by five inch and we labeled that bottom strap. We then cut two pieces of cardstock that were four and three quarters by five and a quarter inch. And what we did on each one of these is we laid it on our scoring board with it going four and three quarters inch across our board. We scored at a half inch and we scored at four and a quarter inches. We next turned our sheet so we were then five and a quarter across the board. We scored at a half inch. We then labeled these back pocket top. We cut two pieces of cardstock that were four and three quarters inch by six inch. We laid these down on our scoring board so we were four and three quarters inch across our board. We scored at a half inch and we scored at four and a quarter inches. We next rotated this so we were now six inches across the board and we scored at a half inch. Our next piece is we had two pieces that we cut at 5 inch by 6 inch. We labeled one upper flip and we labeled the other lower flip. On each one of these though, what we ended up doing is we laid this on our scoring board so we were 5 inches across our board. We scored at 4 and 3 eighths inch and we scored it four and a half inch on both of them. Next, what we cut was a four inch by nine inch piece of cardstock, and we just labeled that fold out pocket. We then cut a large piece of cardstock that was six inches by eight inches, and we labeled it large fold out. We placed this on our scoring board so we were six inches across our board. We scored at a half inch and we scored at three quarters inch. And we had one more piece left. We cut a four and one eighth inch by six and a half inch piece and we just labeled this inside fold out pocket. We are ready to go and first we need to start with getting our main paper. So because our base sheet is primarily going to be covered with pockets, I recommend we use the cover of our paper pad. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn the cover so it's upside down. 
we're going to measure over 8 inches and cut. We'll put this in our reserves. So we're just going to flip this around to where paper pad is over here. We will measure over 6 inches and cut. Let's put this in our reserves. Alright, so this is what we have and on the back we actually have some beautiful paper. We could actually use that if we wanted to. I didn't even, I forgot that they used the, the back. So that works well for us. Let's, uh, let's use that. Now on this, you have this in your reserves. It's also cut at 6 by 8 to have page 1 and 2. Um, the same, so the same background. I think that let's stick cool. one down in front of you. The other one we're going to stick off to the side. I'm not going to put it in my reserves so that it doesn't accidentally get cut into. We're going to work with the lighter piece. All right, let's grab the two pieces that say four and three quarters by six inch, and this is back pocket bottom and it has score lines on the sides. Let's grab our scissor and if you notice down here, whoops, I need to clean my scissors. If you notice down here, it makes from our scoring a little square. We're gonna cut that out. So, we will remove those little corners. And the little corners you can throw in the trash. I can't see what I could possibly use for that with being black. So we're going to do the same on this one. Once you have that, we're going to fold on our score lines. Burnish that down a bit. We are going to cut a curve. And because we're not using any punches or anything like that, I'm going to show you a little trick to try and get a curve. Just by using your score tape to curve off that. Okay, so we have this and we've done that. Let's get this one ready. So I have these all done. I'm gonna slide one over the other and I'm gonna make sure that they're even side to side. Grab one of your score tapes and bring it to where it almost hits the top score line where it meets. Just make sure it's centered in there. And what we're going to do is draw a line. Okay, whoops, now I moved, now I did it. Anyway, we're gonna draw a line. So what we can do with this is actually cut out on that. I'm gonna cut both of mine at once, that's why I do that. So this is what you will have. Keep these. You're going to want to keep these as a template for your other ones and also to cut our paper, our decorative paper to fit that. Okay? Let's assemble these. Let's turn them over. We're going to pull in the sides and we are going to glue this. Now we will be snipping up through here, but let's first get our shape, get this uh, glued. Here's the easiest way to do this. If you're going to want to pull in your sides first and then the bottom comes up. So what I do is I see where the side of this is, this particular flap is, and then I just make sure I stay to the left. And then over here, I'll stay to the right. And then I will press up. A good thing to do is to stick a scratch piece of cardstock in there just in case your glue does squirt out on you. That's no fun. Okay. And then you can also, once you do that, see some glue got here. When you pull it out, you can see what comes in. All right, for this. So when it's actually installed down, you can see part of that flap. You're going to want some. So before we snip that, let's put our score tape on here. I think it's going to be much easier to get our score tape and all that. So I will start up here, and I'm using 3 8 That should be plenty. Just right down the center there. 
Okay, so for the bottom piece, go all the way up without going over there at the top of that little flip. You can add glue where you've the score tape doesn't reach, unless you want to overlap your quarter inch uh, score tape. So I'm going to cut off any score tape that I see peeking over. Okay, so now all I want to do is when I do this, and I'm going to bring it up, I'm just going to cut up at an angle. Here, I'm just going to cut without getting on my panel at an angle. So now you have a nice curve and when you place it down. Okay, we'll do it again. Fold in our sides. I'll add some glue underneath that. Make sure I can get it in and out. Uh, lay my score tape. I'll definitely burnish this all down and clip off any overhang such as this. And now it's time to trim. All right, so that's what we have. And I'll add in the glue if I think I need a little more glue to keep this down. So how this is going to place on our sheet, we are six inches across. One is gonna place here. And one is going to place here. Set this off to the side for a moment. We have these labeled. We won't get them mixed up. Let's work on our four and three quarter by five and a quarter. And then that way I can kind of show you how these are going to work so um, you can get a better idea when we fold this up. It lays on top of this to visualize. So all I'm doing is cutting out the same little square that we had on the other ones and then I'm going to fold. And we're gonna do the same thing to this one. Next, what we're going to do after folding both is we will lay these together, making sure they are absolutely even. That little piece I had you set off to the side, they are the same width in there. Just kind of line it up to the top, side to side, and you will draw. And then we will cut this out. If you need to pause the video to get to this point, I did use my bone folder. This is where we fold in the sides on each one of these. We apply our glue and we press up for our pocket. The next step was to apply our score tape and then clip. So now with them all four done, we have two bottom, two top. How this is going to work is placing one on top of the other after we get our paper. But notice we don't have to get that much paper for the bottom one because it's mostly covered. So once this one is done, and I'm just going to show you here how this is going to play out, then this one will go here and you will have two pockets here on your page. All right, let's put the top ones up here. We first have to get our paper for the bottom. In your paper pack, you will find this print. And I'll bring it up. You'll see the horse and the guy on there. On the other side, it looks like this. Measure over 3 and 5 eighths inch and cut. Put the larger piece in your reserves. Now let's look at it like this. Measure over two and a half inches and cut and measure over again two and a half inches and cut. Alright, put your other piece back. What we have here are two pieces. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can bring this all the way up until the tip of your black meets the top of your paper, you're going to center that side by side. You would flip it over, draw this out with your pencil, and you do the same on that. Then you can cut it out. Or what you can do 
is draw, use this as your template. Place it up there side to side and draw that curvature. So it is up to you and we're going to do that with both of these. You'll have these, just stick these in your reserves. So check your work. Just bring it up center side to side and leave yourself a little bit of black showing. And if you're good, no adjustments needing, needed, just glue that down and it's going to the bottom one right here at the top. And we'll do the same over here. So I'll show you what mine looks like as soon as I get it glued down. So I got mine down. I'm not the perfect cutter. <laughs> My hands do shake at times, but I think that's good enough. I'll set these off to the side. And now I'm going to reach for these. In your paper pack, you will find this lovely print. And down here it says Da Vinci Code. On the back, it looks like this. So, let's see. I want to flip mine around to where the circle is up here. I'm going to measure over 3 and 5 eighths inch and cut. The larger piece is going to go in my reserves. Okay, looking at it like this, I'm going to measure over 4 and 5 eighths inch and cut. Measure over again 4 and 5 eighths inch and cut. Okay, we are going to do the same thing. Whether you want to uh, do it this way, bring it all the way to the top. You will have a little bit of a black border there. Make sure you're even side to side. Flip it over and draw or use your little template plate pieces. So we have that one and then we'll do the same thing with this one. These little trimmings we will stick in our reserves in case I want to use it. So bring this down and you should have your border on the sides and at the top we're going to glue that down and we're going to do the same thing with this one. So let's do that. It's time to attach the small ones to the bigger ones. Let's remove our score tape backing. And I may add just a little bit of glue where I didn't get it on the outside there. Nothing major. Okay, so this is the one I have in my hands. And because it's score tape, it is not forgiving. So line up your bottoms first and then guide it up as best you can. And there you have a little double sleeve pocket. I like to call them sleeve pockets. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this one. Okay, got mine on. Burnished really good. Perfect. Let's place these on our sheet. So first, what I want you to do without removing your score tape is just place that down over towards the left and this one too. You will have enough room to leave maybe an eighth of an inch here before it hits the pockets, an eighth of an inch down from the top. You should have a space in between yours. So I'm going to start with the top one. Remove the backing off your score tape. and I'm going to bring this down a little closer for me. I'm going to try and I'm going to bring it over leaving about an eighth of an inch um, away in if I can or a sixteenth but just do the best you can. You should have about an eighth of an inch up top. You just want to leave yourself a little bit room. Okay, that's down. Okay, same thing for this and I'm going to make sure I'm even with where I placed it here over here and come up about an eighth of an inch from the bottom or sixteenth, just enough to give me a little bit of a gap. If you're off a little, it's not the end of the world if you're not completely even, which I may not be there. But it isn't really going to matter because you're not going to tell too much once you're looking at your paper. So you have your pockets here. The next two pieces we need are the 5 by 6 One says lower flip and one says upper flip. 
So let's grab those and fold on those score lines. All right, upper flip and lower flip. We're gonna install the lower one. So the lower one you're gonna have where you folded and the peak it peaks are on the outside. If you were to push this in, it will make like a spacing. See that? See our space? Run your finger and make sure that this is flat. Here is the bottom and we're just gonna hook that flap right back behind our main piece. Okay, make sure that that is flat. Once you have it there in place, pinch and hold it. If you feel it slip, start over with lining it up, but I like to keep my hand down here for pressure, my finger down here for when I have to let this fall. Now I'm gonna fold this back. And sometimes you can see if you're gonna be straight or not here. But if you need to uh, readjust, it's best not to do it right there. It's best to start over with uh, realigning. And do not get any glue on that spacing. It's just on the little flap here. We're going to roll that flap over onto the back of our page. It's not totally flat. It's, it's okay. Okay. Check to see how even you are. If you need to readjust, do it before the glue sets. But mine's on as good as it's going to get. I'm going to do the same thing. This is the top. Like This is our lower flip. The upper flip is going to, make sure you're in the right position here, flat, is going to hook over the top. Now sometimes it's easier, I'm going to turn this around, so here's my top. Sometimes it's easier, and I like to teach this way, but you, if you're looking at it here and here's your flap, you have an outside score line and an inside score line. On the outside one, pinch it. Now just hook that right on over your paper. See? And it won't be flat at this point, but it does help with getting it down and flush and even on the sides. You can then, once you know you're even, it looks good, you will pinch and hold. And you can glue down first, and then you can go and push that back, and, and I will show you what I mean by that. So I've got my flap on. So whichever way is easy for you, I find the way I'm doing right now has always been the easiest for me. So it's not flat, it's kind of slanted. Now I can push up and it's flat and I'm even. Top flap, lower flap. Okay, what we're gonna do here is we are going to uh, get our paper and finish up with this and then we will add our fold out page that goes on top of this. In your reserves, pull this back out. On the back, it looks like this. I want this side to be laying over here lined up. Let's measure over five and seven eighths inch and cut. This is what we should have. Let's turn this. We're going to measure over four and three sixteenths inch and cut. And then that should give us close to the same for what is left over. So if you do not know where 4 and 3 sixteenths is, I do have a ruler that is clear and you can add black cardstock or whatever to the back. But on one side it gives us the eighths and on the other side it gives us the sixteenths. So I'm going to show you. Here's 4 inches right here. Here is four and a quarter right here. Four and three sixteenths is that next little line before you hit four and an eighth. So right in between there. We have approximately around the same cuts. So here, if we were, here is the top of my lower flap 
If you notice, if we place this down, it will give us a black border top, bottom, and sides without getting on our score line. This one should give us the same and be a good fit. Now, the dilemma for me is, do I want to put this one under here and this one on top? And the answer is, yes, I do. So I'm going to place this one on the top and that one on the bottom. So let's apply our glue and glue these down. Mine is down. Let's just flip those up and down and get our paper for down here and up here. In your reserves, pull this out. We're going to do the same thing as we did before. First cut, measure over 5 and 7 eighths inch and cut. Put the skinny little piece you had left over in your reserves. Let's just turn that, measure over 4 and 3 sixteenths inch and cut, and then that should leave uh, the same as well, or close to the same. So we have these that we can place down, or we can use these more colorful side, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to glue that one down here, and I'm going to glue this one up here. So let's do that. Don't forget, after using your glue, to burnish down your pieces there. So that's what we have so far. It's pretty cool. Grab your large fold out. It's a six by eight. And we're going to fold on those score lines. Okay, and then we'll push back and we should feel flat on the side. We're going to hook this. Here's our top of our album. Hook that back behind, making sure that we are centered top and bottom, that it looks good where it should be. We're going to hold it, pinch it, don't let it go, flip over your piece and continue to hold down. Now, over here, let's get our flap with some glue. It's always best to check after we do this, the inside, make sure you didn't get glue seeping down into, sorry I have a pen in my mouth, uh, getting it uh, seeping down into the uh, spacing. So once you have it, make sure you're down in the back. Um, another way to make sure it's all down and not lumpy is after you put it on there and you can fill the side, is you can open up your piece flat, flip it over, and smooth it down this way too. Just make sure it doesn't shift around on you. Okay. In your reserves, you will have this piece. It's 12 inches. We're going to look at it like this and measure over 7 and 7 eighths inch and cut. What's going to happen is we're actually going to play, place this down and this is actually going to wrap back behind to make another pocket, so a side pocket. So it's easiest to place your piece down this way. Okay, let's grab our 4x9 fold-out pocket. And this is going to be a side pocket. We will burnish that down really good. This is another way to do pockets and I showed you how to do uh, these pockets here, which are, remind me of little pillowcase pockets. And uh, so this one is a different way. So I'm gonna turn this, my adhesive is down here. It's easier for me. I'm gonna give this a slight little bend. And when I place this, notice that I have black cardstock hanging over here and over the edge here. That is exactly what you want. Um, and that's what we're going to need. So when you pull this down, make sure you have overhang. Bring it to the edge. Okay, before you press down, what I like to do, because it gives a little more room, start in the middle with your fingers and press firmly out. Sometimes you can see this pop up a little bit from doing that and that is what we wanted to see. 
If it only did a little move, that's okay. It's still a good pocket. So once you have that on, flip it over, and we're just going to pinch and pull these flaps back behind. Okay? And then we can tack them down. These are one of my favorite pockets uh, to do. There are different ways to do pockets, and uh, so you've already learned two ways. And I'm not sure if I'll be teaching the other way in this tutorial yet. Still trying to figure that out as I make this as I go. Okay, so this is what you have. You should be able to see what's in there. Let's find our paper for this. Remember this piece in our reserves with the guy on the horse? That's the piece that we want, but we're going to turn it sideways. The guy's over here now. We're going to measure over three and seven eighths inch and cut. We're going to put the larger piece back in our reserves. Now here's another way to figure out if you are doing on your own mini albums and you're not real good at um, measuring or uh, uh, going by the ruler. Another way is, for example, this. And during this tutorial, I may have you what I call measure to fit. And what you do by that is you would lay your piece down. And how I'm laying it is giving myself a black border here and a black border here. I'll have a little bit of a black border sliver up there. And what I'll do is bring down my pencil to where I can see that black cardstock, and I will make a pencil mark. Now I know where I need to trim to fit this panel. So let's do that. Let's verify we're going to fit okay. This is perfect. We're going to go with this. Let's apply glue to this side and glue this down. In your reserves, you will find your tags and, and little quotes. Let's cut out this blue one. On this particular one right here, um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this as I don't know Italian. But when I uh, typed it in Google Translate, make sure I have the right one here, I quoted. Um, it said in so many words, the water that touches rivers and the last of those that go, and the first of us, a uh, first of those that come. So the present time. So most of these are like um, just really cool little sayings. So here's what I wanted you to do, and this is what I do in a lot of my tutorials. Grab out of your reserve some black cardstock, apply glue to the back of this, and glue this down. Now when you do that, leave yourself a black border all the way around, just a sliver when you're cutting it back out. After cutting out and around, this is what mine looks like. So what I'm going to do so that I can still allow something to slide back behind, I'm just going to put a little glue at the bottom back and I'm going to just slightly angle that. It is time to get this on our page. So we're going to apply glue to this or score tape. And we are going to center that side to side, top to bottom, and place that. Look how cool our page already looks. We are right here. And in your reserves, you will have this sheet. The guy on the horse is at the top. Let's measure over five inches and cut. Next, let's just look at it like this. We'll measure over seven and seven eighths inch and cut. All right. So the last pocket that we need to grab is our four and one eighth by six and a half inch. And it says inside fold out pocket. And this piece is for our inside. So we're going to do the same thing that we did on the other, except this time the score tape goes at the bottom of our panel, the guy on the horse up here. And we're going to mount this. 
pocket. So I'll give a little bend, make sure I have even a hangover on each side of that piece. Once it's down, I'm pressing the middle and push out. Now I can turn it over, pull those flaps back behind, apply glue, and tack those down. It's okay right now for us to apply glue, or you can use your score tape, and we will center that side to side, top to bottom. Now one thing is, is don't forget, when you center this, there is your inside score line right here. Your outside score line is right here. So that's the one that you're watching when you place this down you want to center in between that outside score line and the outside of your black cardstock. If you get this on that score line or any of those, your closing mechanism will not work correctly. In your reserves, you will find this piece. On the back, it looks like this. We're going to use it. That should be a perfect fit side to side. Now, I want you to place this and there should be more distress at the bottom than at the top. So the distress at the, at the bottom. So when you place this down, leave yourself about a sixteenth of an inch of black showing. We are going to measure to fit. So come to the bottom of your black cardstock pocket where you can still see it. If you need to move it over just a little bit so that you can see what you're doing, let's do so. We're actually going to bring it even with the bottom of that pocket and that should be a sliver off here. So once you've marked it, let's cut that. Now, in your reserves you should have a sliver like this. I think it's the cutting of probably the top or the bottom of one of these panels. Let's grab it. It looks like this on one side and on the other side it's this. And you know it's the right one because when you place this side to side it is the same width. So let's apply glue to this and we will put that on our pocket and then we will apply glue to this side and we will place that right on top just like that. So let's do that. Grab one of your smaller Tim Holtz gears Find the flat side, the flattest side. They're both pretty flat, but there's one side that's meant for the show and one is meant for the down side that you wouldn't. I'm just going to place one right here in the pocket, right in the middle. Perfect. That looks good. Let's close that up. We are almost done. The last two pieces that remain are the 2 inch by 5 inch and the two inch by five and a half. This is the top strap, this is the bottom strap. One thing that I did not have you do was score this. So we are going to score this now. Let's place our bottom flap so we are five inches across. Let's score at three eighths inch. And I think we're just gonna do one score and then we will bend the rest. Take your other one and we will do the same. Let's just score it three eighths. And we will just fold. That'll give us enough to get over and whatnot. Okay, the easiest one to always install is the bottom one. And what you're gonna have to do is pull this and we can crease and make a good fit. But you're going to hook it back behind and you're going to, to uh, stick out like that. Okay, once you have it back behind there, like so, see where you're at in the middle. If you need to mark with pencils, do so, but we're going to install this flap. I want to show you how you can actually do these uh, to get a good fit. Sometimes they're a little, the, the scoring is a little uh, too loose or too tight. So let's just put that and we will make our own. So there is the bottom one and we will do the same with the top. Now in order to get the top to match up, this is where you just lay it down, make sure everything is flat. 
bring it over the top and press to get that crease. You will see where it starts to crease. So, once you see where your crease is, you can fold it back the other way to get it straight if you need to. And then bring it back on over, like so. Okay, we can now put this one on. Okay, pull this over because what's going to hold this is our magnet. And our magnet will straighten you up. So I have that back behind. I'm going to pull this over to see where I need to be. And I'll wrap it. And that looks good. Okay, so I found where I need to be, so I'm going to kind of pinch it there. And you can see. So you can pinch it this way, fold it back, whichever way is easiest for you to get that crease and to be straight. So let's see. So that's going to work, and my magnet will pull it in the right direction, just like that. All right, it is easier to place, for me anyway, it's easier for me to do the top one with the magnet than the bottom. So we'll place that down about three quarters of an inch from the top. In your reserves, you will have this. Let's turn it over. Measure over one and seven eighths inch and cut. All right, I have this and we have enough to cut another strip here. So why don't we? We have our one strip that's one and seven eighths. Let's measure over one and seven eighths inch on this one. So let's do our thing here. Let's place this down. You can see where your score is that you've made. Place that down center, and I'm on the inside now. We're going to measure to fit. So I'm just going to make a pencil mark there, and I'm going to cut. Here is my cut piece. I'm going to apply glue to this side, and I'm going to glue that down. All right, so we have this left over after we cut that. Now don't glue this piece down. What I want you to do is we are going to measure to fit. Now that we have covered up the magnet up here, it is easier to get the mate on without it pulling off because they are strong and they will pull off. So let's just place the mate on top of that. This is a little trick I do every time. I place a piece of, or I actually daub a little piece, a little circle if I could speak, of glue in the center of that. Now, Pull this up, bring this down, but don't, don't bring it all the way over until you are lined up where it's supposed to be. And don't pull hard. You want it to be a good fit to allow to add stuff. So that would be good for me to go right here. As you can see, I can still fit stuff in there. So I'm looking right there. So I press, and I see where that magnet needs to go glue to glue side. All right, we have that. You can apply glue to this and you can now glue that down. You should be able to latch. The next part is easy. We're going to take our other long strip. We will measure to fit that. Once you got your mark, cut it and glue that down. And then the rest of that, you will do the same down here. You will measure to fit on this one. And then you'll glue that down. Okay, so this is what yours should look like. So here we go. I have one of the larger gears and for this I'm only going to glue half of this, put glue on half of this because it's going to halfway hang down so you can actually grab at it. Just make sure you don't have glue seeping off to glue your stuff together. On your sentiments or uh, quotes page, uh, up here at the top, it says, as you cannot do what you want, want what you can do. I'm going to cut that out. Uh -huh. And we won't mount page one um, until we are done mounting page two. And those of you that already have taken my tutorials know why. 
but when we get there I will tell you if you are new to my tutorials and my reasoning behind that. So for this I did not add any of the gold to this page and um, I think it would have looked really cool had I done it but that's okay we have a lot more pages we can do that with. Okay, so here is our page one. We're going to flip it over and apply score tape around the outside like a picture frame to start. You can use your quarter inch or your three eighths whatever you would like. I just can't find my quarter inch right now so I'm using three eighths. I'm going to go one down the middle. I do have the three eighths here. Oh there's my quarter. I like my quarter. And I'm going to put two on either side of that piece. This is a very uh, heavy page, but I think that that will be enough to hold everything down. Make sure that you use your bone folder and carefully go through this. You shouldn't destroy it at all just by pressing down. Your book is going to have um, pressure against it, whether um, two pages come together or whatever, but it should not tear on you. So I have this. Page one is complete. Let's move on to page two. It's going to take us probably maybe 10 minutes to get that one done or less. It's a real quick one.